I think the lesson of this week is what might have been. Uh, you know, this is a session uh, where we have a balanced budget and $900 million surplus, uh, and we could have made historic strides to transform an economy that still isn't working uh, and is still squeezing too many ordinary Minnesotans. And in order to preserve as much money as possible for tax breaks, and mainly tax breaks for well-connected special interests. That's what this week is all about. That's what today is about, and it's wrong. Um, and why do I say historic? Well, I mean, there are two things, and you've, uh, we've talked about them uh, over and over. Uh, you know, I had the fortune to travel around the state quite a bit over the last year, uh, meeting with community members uh, in many places about issues related to broadband. And, you know, this is an issue where Minnesotans are leading. You know, they're stepping up and saying, we have this problem in our community. We see these challenges for our school kids, for our businesses, uh, for our communities in general. Uh, and the governor listened, $100 million investment in that. Uh, the Senate has listened. Uh, the Republicans simply aren't listening to Minnesotans on this issue. They're not following the lead of Minnesotans. You know, f averaging less than $20 million a year in a bit, probably $15 million a year, less than we put in in our original down payment in 2014 for broadband. That's what the Republicans are proposing, and far, far short uh, of the need that's been identified out there. Uh, it's the wrong direction and missing a historic opportunity. Uh, disparities is another example that has been at the front burner this year. Uh, and uh, it's a crisis, it really is. And I'm really pleased that for the first time in my career here, it, it is kind of on everybody's minds and in the discussions that people are having. And really, at the end of the day, what it comes down to is we have communities in this state, just like with broadband, but here communities of color that have seen historic underinvestment. And part of that is underinvestment by our state government. Uh, we have a chance here uh, to do more than just toss a few million dollars around, which is the Republicans are, are proposing, uh, and to actually make real transformative change in these communities, and yet the Republicans, again, are missing that opportunity. Um, the last thing I just want to say is, you know, this bill today, and I think all this week, really is an example of a strategy I think the Republicans have had from the beginning of this session, uh, and that is they really have no intention of getting anything done this year. And what they're trying to do is set the stage uh, to blame other people for that happening uh, and to give a fig leaf of cover to their members when they go back to their communities without having accomplished anything. Um, I think that is the reality of what's going on this session, and I, uh, it's really too bad because we have a real historic opportunity to make strides for Minnesotans this year, uh, but the Republicans, for ideological and other reasons, don't want to do that. Um, so at the end of the day, you know, we know that the, the key uh, debate that's going on in this country that everybody feels is that the playing field is tilted against too many people in this state and in this country. It's what the essential debate is going on. And the jobs bill, this bill we're taking up today, should be the bill where we actually go after that issue and try to make some real change and real strides. Uh, unfortunately, uh, because special interests are whispering in the, in the Republicans' ear, we are not, uh, we're not making those strides with this bill, and it's a huge missed opportunity. I don't know if anybody else wants to. You know, uh, Paul Marquardt uh, from Dilworth, broadband is the great economic equalizer in rural Minnesota. And yet, the woeful, inadequate funding of $15 million not only will not level the playing field for rural Minnesota, but will actually move rural Minnesota further behind in terms of economic development when compared to the metro areas. And I, I don't understand. These are all dollars that go out to rural Minnesota. And the governor's broadband task force says we need $200 million. The governor has committed $100 million this year. The Senate has committed $85 million. And the House commitment, after all the rhetoric, after all the bluster and everything you heard about rural Minnesota, $15 million. I mean, where's the disconnect? When, in fact, last year in grant applications alone, we had $29 million. That's just basically unserved areas. And again, how bad is it for rural Minnesota? If you look at uh, just a 10 megabit speed, which is really pretty slow, 99% of the folks, households in the metro area have that access, only 80% in rural Minnesota. When you up that, that 25 megabytes per second download, which is Really, even businesses say isn't anything that great, but probably a minimum. At 25, 99% availability in the metro drops down to 47% in rural Minnesota. 
And we could talk about stories and stories and stories, but this is certainly going to leave our rural businesses further behind. It will re uh, drop our farmers further behind and leave our students further behind. And uh, <laughs> when you underfund this important area that will allow our businesses in rural Minnesota to compete not only locally, uh, statewide, but nationally and internationally, uh, this is going to leave us as a huge dis disadvantage. And one thing that really worries me is that that really threatens rural Minnesota losing our young generation, our next generation of young leaders out to the metro area. So unfortunately, you think we had a deficit? Well, we got a $900 million surplus and $15 million out of that when it goes to rural Minnesota to help equalize and make us more competitive economically with the rest of the state. It just is not there and will not do the job. Mark, if I could, I made just a moment. Uh, they say it's forty million. You say it's fifteen. What? Why isn't it, is their number right or what? They have fifteen million in this broadband grant in this bill. I think they have another seven. They're counting in the education bill, the broadband on a bus yeah, they say that's program. In the 40, so. Yeah, and then they count twenty-five next year. Well, we're I'm talking about this year when they're talking about 200 out of the broadband task force. The governor, 100 this year. Senate, 85 this year. It's 15 this year. So the and chairman says that that's going to be tough. That, that's going to be $250 million altogether, and that's going to be tough for the private businesses to gear up to lay the fiber and everything in the year. And, you know, they talk about the federal funding that's going to, that's the CAF uh, phase two that's coming. First of all, there's many areas of the state that won't even come close to qualifying for that. And I have a map if anyone wants to see it. But they also, you are excluded from uh, even trying to be an applicant for that if you're like over three millibits. For, I mean, the speeds are so low, it will do nothing. We have a business that sent a letter to the committee that does business in six rural cities in this state. And he was talking about even at 25 megabytes, we are way behind Romania and Bulgaria and many other states and international areas that he does business in. And his two main concerns were not only serving his clients, but getting a workforce to come out to rural Minnesota. So, you know, it's a workforce besides a competitive economic issue for rural Minnesota. And I'm sorry, I may not have been clear, but the chairman says that with, if you have the $250 million, it's going to be hard to gear up to get enough people to dig the trenches, lay the fiber, and whatever's needed. Yeah, it, the point I think needs to be made here is that the federal grants won't go to a lot of the areas that really need it. And so you might almost have kind of two different pots and two different folks being ser served here. And I think when we talk about a lot of these underserved cities that have businesses out in rural Minnesota that can't compete, nationally or they've, they're architects or they do all sorts of diagrams that takes a long time to download, they wouldn't qualify for all those federal dollars. So you have those dollars over here and you have the state that could bring dollars into those important areas in rural Minnesota. Well, let me try a third time. I'm not communicating it. I need another job, I guess. No. He says that you can't get the workers to dig ditches, to lay fiber and that type of thing if you spend too much money, basically. There's okay. just not enough people out I, there to do that. I can't answer that. I don't know. All I do know is that last year there was $29 million of applicants. And you know that $10.6 million went really quick. So for the state dollars, we have way more applicants. And, and it's not probably talking about $250 million, But no, I, I don't know if we could do that. But we certainly can do this state part that I know people are the applicants are way more than what we've been asking. And we, we had testimony in the committee. We had testimony in the committee. We had this exact same conversation in the committee. And the, you know, the expert is Margaret Anderson Keller, who, who chairs the, the governor's broadband task force. And she indicated that that's a false argument. That's a red herring. And that people are snapping up e these grants as fast as they can get their hands on them. And there are plenty of businesses that are ready to do the work. She would really be the expert um, in her staff, or the staff of the broadband task force to answer the question about the workforce being able to use the money. 
Can you elaborate on your comment about this is an example of how Republicans don't want to do anything this year? Uh, just elaborate on that. Sure. I mean, if you look at what they're trying to do in this bill, is they're, they're emptying funds uh, that otherwise go to, uh, you know, we have a $900 million surplus. They're emptying, emptying funds to try to desperately find a way that their members can say, well, at least I voted for broadband, knowing that it's not a real solution to it. Uh, you look at how they've been talking about the transportation bill from the very first day of session. Their best outcome, from my perspective, is no transportation bill because that's what they want to run on in this election. That's terrible for Minnesota. It lets Minnesotans down, but that's what their strategy is. Jason, if I can maybe go backwards here and talk about the disparities for a moment. As you look at their bill today, how much would go for disparities? How many millions are you talking about? Well, if I look at the jobs bill, I would, I would say that there's between two and three million dollars that you could legitimately say are going to disparities. I mean, there's some other programs, you know, that could help people and could not, but specifically investing in those communities. Um, I, you know, I, as I ran through, I think I have their sheet right here from yesterday. Uh, and I, I came up with about uh, two and a half million dollars. You know, the Neighborhood Development Center, uh, the Clues, the Ujamaa Place, uh, and uh, the Apprenticeship Program. What they say, and I understand it's not in this bill exactly, but what they say is that education is the best way to deal with this disparities uh, problem long term to really fix it instead of just throwing money at it as Democrats want to. So education is an important part of it, but we have a crisis right now, and there's lots of people who are being left behind right now, and we know that there are certain investments that we can make that put money into those communities that will actually create jobs right now. And quite frankly, the best way to get a great education for a child is to make sure that their parents have a stability and a good job as well. And so I think it all comes together, but we need to deal with this crisis uh, right now. Thank you. Thank you.